how's everybody doing today? This is Rich Harshaw. We're here for our tactical marketing webinar. We're going to talk about social media today. And the social media conversation that we are going to have is probably a little bit different than what you've heard in the past. Uh, in fact, let me just start this uh, conversation by saying uh, the following story. If you go back to the title slide you see on here, it says Social Media Fundamentals for Remodelers. This is going to be applicable to anybody. But uh, let me tell you why it says remodelers on there. I was hired by a major company to do a webinar for their people on this topic of social media. And I created the webinar that we're going to go through today. Okay? And I submitted it over to them for review, and they looked at it, and they said, uh, this is really good. We like this, except for we need to change a few things. And they changed a few things, and they changed a few things. And after a while, the presentation that came out of the other end of that funnel really had very minimal resemblance to the one that I started out with. And here's what changed specifically. They took my message of social media, and if you go back to the title slide, look at it says, what to do, what not to do, and what to expect. And here's what you're going to see just by way of a little bit of a preview here. This is not, for your company, social media is not going to be the biggest, fattest deal in the history of the planet Earth. It just simply is not, period. Now, the company that hired me to do this wanted me to draw the conclusion that all the stupid magazines and articles and people and all these other people are talking about that says that social media is this big, huge thing, and it's so awesome. you got to ride the wave, and it's the next big thing, and you got to be involved, and blah, 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 and all of these overhyped bullcrap things. And you'll see in this presentation, I'm not going to say don't do social media. I'm going to let you know exactly what to expect and realistically how it fits into your marketing program and how to execute it if you do go this route. But uh, it's not a rah-rah session where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fan the flames of social media is the cure to all your marketing problems because you know what? It's not. There are 17 other things that you should probably be focusing on before you even start to think about social media. That being said, the 18th thing on the list is still on the list and it's still important. So because it's a big thing that's talked about a lot, because there's a lot of people looking at social media. We're going to cover it, but I want to keep this real, and I want you to know that uh, this is the unsanitized version. This is the raw version, and uh, here's what we're going to cover. Introduction to social media. That'll be brief. Social media myths and facts, and this is one of the parts that they really had a big issue with. We don't want to talk about myths. We don't want to talk about the facts because they don't, they don't fall into line with what we want people to think. I don't give a crap what people think. I only give a crap what's really the case. And so that's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about, simply simply put, creating a social media strategy that will work for you. Okay? So we'll take a couple of Q&As if, if we have some time. Okay? Let's get into social media. What is social media? If you don't know what social media is by now, you're probably, you know, not paying attention. It's a way to connect to your prospects, customers through Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter. There's something called Hows that you need to know about, things like that. <clears throat> Here's what you need to know about social media. It's a self-selective relationship. People decide to follow you or to like you, as the case may be, because they feel that you can provide them with interesting, useful content. This right here is really what you need to take out of this if you take nothing else out of this entire webinar. And this is the part that the big company that wanted me to produce and present this seminar, this webinar, did not like. It's self-selective people follow you because they feel like you can provide them with the useful, interesting content. The problem with that is that it's difficult to present useful, interesting content. That's where people fall down. It takes time and effort to produce interesting, useful content. People would rather produce and present stupid, trite, banal, weird, uninteresting, non-motivating, ridiculous content because it's easier. I've said this multiple times over several speaking engagements uh, earlier this month, which is the following. The easy things are not going to work because if the easy things worked, everybody would be working them and everybody would be making money, and the easy things don't work. Things that work take time, take effort, take initiative, take attention, 
attention's a big one, and they take money. So that's what's going to happen with social media. Time, attention, effort, ingenuity, innovation, money are going to be involved. You say, well, how's it going to take money because social media is free? You just post something on there. Yeah, well, if you don't commit resources to doing it right, you, you're, it's not going to work, okay? So here's what you need to know. Social media usage is high. It accounts for a lot of time spent on the Internet. You probably know that, so that's the reason that people want to tap into it. So let's learn how to harness this. Let's go through some myths. I think there's about five or six of them. Myth number one, everybody is making a fortune on social media. And the answer, the reality is, no, they're not. Are some people making a fortune on social media? Of course they are. Are most people making a fortune on social media? No, they're not. And the reality is, the reality is that they're not making a fortune because it's just not possible. Uh, I didn't think of this before the uh, webinar, but I'm going to pull something up and I'm going to read you something. So hang on just a second. I'm going to pause my screen and bring something up and prepare to be astounded. Okay? Uh, this will just take me a second to find. All right. Where is this thing? Okay. Where is that thing? Here it is. All right. I think this is it. All right. Oh, man. I know this sucks to listen to me sit here, but trust me, this will be worth it. Just a second. I hadn't thought about this, but I'm going to find this. Okay, here we go. Social media backlash has begun. This is an article. Um, I don't know where this is found. I'll find it and send it to you. The backlash has begun. Blame the unlikely team of the Onion and IBM. The former dropped a pitch-perfect takedown of social media experts right before Thanksgiving. Then Big Blue released data that showed Facebook, ha Facebook had almost zero effect on Black Friday sales and that Twitter actually had zero. The one-two punch confirmed my deep suspicion that a lot of buzzword-laden blather around social media marketing the past few years was itself a form of marketing for self-conferred experts to look, looking to make a buck off of scared blue chip companies. That's not to say there aren't bright, honest people playing in their trade. It, it's just that I keep waiting for one of them to have a Jerry Maguire moment. For those not familiar with the movie, Jerry Maguire was a sports agent who tried to, to get tired of the dishonesty in the industry and pens a mission statement, blah, 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 anyway, show me the money, right? Like, no more buying likes. It was forgivable in 2009 to rack up as many Facebook fans as humanly possible, but now that it's almost 2013, this was written at the end of last year, it's time to acknowledge how pointless that is. That's especially true if a consumer has to like something in order to take part in a promotion. Sure, you have exposure when a friend of that consumer sees the like, but the truth is Target doesn't necessarily like you. He just wants to win something. Okay, let's keep going. Salvaging a customer interaction on Twitter doesn't make you Steve Jobs. We've all seen and heard stories of incentive customers who whine about their experience on Twitter and then get set right by a competent customer service rep on Twitter. But here's another story for you. Over the summer, I had a horrible experience with United Airlines. I went to Twitter to complain, and United never responded. The nerve. Okay, now, here's the funny part. If I was booking a flight, and United's price was even $10 cheaper than the next airline, I'd book with them again. It's not because I'm a forgiving person. It's because, for me, price is the top priority when booking a flight. On the other hand, if I had a wonderful interaction on Twitter with Best Buy, but again, I'd, I'd drop them in a heartbeat if Amazon was selling one of his products at a lower price. A final example. In 2005, Dell became a whipping boy for ignoring Uber whiner Jeff Jarvis, who had a blog that became a prime example of the pitfalls brands face if they don't have a social media strategy. So Dell got a bunch of social media experts to turn things around. Now the company is a model for any brand looking to set up a dialogue with customers in social media. So how is that working out for Dell? Well, not so well. Dell is looking like the sick man of the PC business. 
You're not a publisher. Brands aren't publisher. Brands are advertisers. Publishers are publishers. For instance, Coca-Cola has 55 million Facebook fans and does a great job providing them with a stream of content. But if page leavers' research is to be believed, Coke will be lucky to reach 6% of those fans with a status update. If it wants to reach the other 94%, then it has to pay. Now I ask you, what sort of publisher has to pay money to another media company to reach its own readers? In another example, IBM complained on 32,000 individual blogs and a wealth of other professional-grade content. Yet, one does not simply go to IBM.com and expect to see editorial content. No matter how good it is, the reader will always suspect the goal is not truth-seeking, but the promotion of IBM. That's fine, but it's really advertising, not publishing. Okay, all of that discussion from that article is to say this. The social media thing is not the end-all panacea. It's not making people a fortune. It's not making Dell a fortune. It's not making Coca-Cola a fortune. Does that mean it's not a worthwhile endeavor? Not necessarily, but here's what it does mean. Before you rush out to get all hot and bothered about making this a top priority, consider what really is going to happen. Okay? Let's keep going on the webinar. Here's the truth. Most companies are underutilizing social media. Most of your competitors are either not participating, failing in their attempts. There's an opportunity to shine if you learn some basic principles and consistently apply them. But is this going to make you a fortune? Probably not. You don't have to be a computer geek to put social media to work. That's a good thing. Here's the key thing. Consistency is the most important characteristic. We'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Okay? Social media myth number two, it's all about lead generation. We're going to go on Facebook. We're going to start generating a bunch of leads. Well, 3,000 visitors to a website, 600 click call to action, 150 leads interact with company, 30 are pre-qualified, 10 are sold. This is the lead funnel. Is that how it's going to work with social media? Probably not. Here's the truth. The main purpose of social media is to nurture relationships, nurture relationships, including prospects and past customers. If you want to keep your company and services at the forefront of people's minds, social media is a good way to do that. You want to keyword, gently nudge them closer to you, and generate referrals so that uh, when people ask on their Facebook uh, when they ask on Facebook, hey, does anybody know a good X, then your name will ostensibly be at the forefront of that person's mind. The other main purpose of social media is to enhance your SEO rankings, and that's something that's worthwhile and something we're talking about. Let's look at the SEO py pyramid. I've talked about this on an SEO webinar that we've done. Coding, content, keywords, links, these are the most important uh, elements of SEO. At the very top, social media. Here's what this means. If you make a Facebook or a Twitter or some other social media posting, it's going to be indexed by the social by the search engines and that's going to help your search engine optimization. So the reality is for the majority of you, the search engine benefits of social media actually outweigh the actual customer interaction benefits of social media. Now, I, I say that to make a comparative statement, not to make an absolute statement. Here's what I did not just say. The, the, social, the SEO benefits of social media make it worthwhile. Meanwhile, the actual customer nurturing are absolutely not worthwhile. That's not what I said. I said that in order of importance, so SEO, number two, actually nurturing people. But they're both important, okay? So myth number three, followers equal success. You heard me just talk about that in the article that I wrote a second ago. Here's the truth. Quality equals success. Quantity, quality, quantity, quality, okay? We're looking for quality of followers. The truth, quality is what's important. You can measure this by how many people actually fit your demographic, how many of those are actually following you, okay? So hang on just one second. I need to check something. Um, let me check something real quick here. All right, I got to be careful what I say. Um, let's keep going here. Number four, this is a key one. People can't wait to hear from you. People can't wait to hear from you. This is what you think. Oh, I'm going to get on Facebook and I'm going to post all this crap and people are going to want to hear it. Well, the truth, not so much, not really. People can wait to hear from you. Nobody's really that excited about it, okay? So let's take a look. Here's the truth. You have to understand your target market. Typically, if you're a remodeler, 40 to 65 years old. Now, you look at your target market, 
And if you've got a target market that's younger than this, then that's going to be a little bit different. If your target market is 20-somethings or teenagers, then social media is something that you're going to want to look more carefully and more closely at. For the majority of you that are on this webinar, think in terms of your older demographic. Now, here's what that means. How younger people use social media is different from how older people use social media. We could show you lots of statistics that, that shows and proves that, yes, there are a lot of older people that are on social media, but they use it different than younger people. Now, I'll, I'll tell you this interesting little story. This uh, goes back uh, almost two years now. Um, I had the opportunity to teach an early morning Bible study class at my church uh, for high school students, and it went every day, uh, every school day from 6.30 to 7.20 a.m., okay? And I had about 17 kids in my class. And on the first day of class, I took some information from them. I basically did a little survey where I could find out, you know, a little bit about them, what they liked, what they were involved in, sports or band or whatever the case was. And one of the things I asked them was, are you on Facebook? And then I asked them this, how many friends do you have on Facebook? Out of the 17 kids, 15 were on Facebook. Two had parents that wouldn't allow them. The other 15 were on Facebook. The average number of friends, as reported by these 15 teenagers, was about 600. There were about six or seven of them that had over a thousand friends. And the lowest number of friends, I think, was somewhere in the three, two to three hundred range. Now, here's an interesting exercise. When I go to seminars and I'm talking about this topic, I'll ask people who are more in the 40, 45, 60, 65, in that range, 40 to 65, I ask them, who's on Facebook? We get a lot of hands. I ask them, how many friends do you have? Does anybody have 1,000 friends? No hands. Does anybody have 500 friends? No hands. Does anybody have 300 friends? A couple of hands. Does anybody have 200 friends? A few more hands. Does anybody have 100 friends? A lot of hands. Most hands. Now, what's the point here? The point is that older people, i.e., your demographic, here's how they use social media. They use social media to stay in contact with people and things, and primarily people, that they are genuinely interested in being connected to. Now, here's what that means. I'll give you a good example. I'll just take this from my own personal little uh, self. Just me. My experience may be different than others, but here's how I use Facebook as an example. Uh, I've been on Facebook since 2009, so it's going on four years now. And I have somewhere in the neighborhood, I don't actually know how many Facebook friends I have, but it's somewhere in that 100 to 150 range. I drop people from time to time, get tired of hearing, of, hearing from or whatever. But here's the kind of people that are on there. Number one, my, I, I've got three sisters and a brother, and they're all on there, and it's a great way for me to keep up with what they're doing because I don't see them that often. Some of them live in other parts of the country. Some of them live in town, but I still don't see them that much, so I get to keep up with them. I've got some... Uh, relatives, cousins, um, aunts and uncles, things like that, and I see what they're doing. And then I've got college friends. I've got, uh, for me in particular, it was maybe different for you, I've got mission friends. I was a missionary in Taiwan for two years in 1988 to 1990 and became very good friends with some of those guys that I was serving with, so I, I'm friends with some of those guys. I've got a few high school friends. I wasn't, you, you probably find this hard to believe, I wasn't that popular in high school. I had a close-knit set of friends, but I didn't have a lot of friends. So there's a few people from high school that I'm on there with. There's a bunch of people from church, and there's a couple of people that I know from early life, from elementary and, and uh, junior high school. Okay? Now, all of the people that are on there are there because I'm genuinely interested in hearing what they have to say. Some of them talk more than others. and Some that talk too much, I kind of get rid of them. But here's the point. It's all about actual relationships. There's a few things that I like, and I see those things come up. I, I'm a big fan of the, of the band Rush, like a lot of men that are 43 years old. And so I like the Rush page. And every once in a while, they'll put something on there about an upcoming concert or a new release or something. So they made the news somewhere somehow, and, it, and they'll put that on there, and I'll look at it. 
here's the point, though. If you're posting junk on your Facebook post or on your Twitter feed that is not something that these people genuinely would want to hear or see or be exposed to, it's not going to happen for you. It's just not. They're going to unlike you, unfriend you. They're going to drop you from their mobile feed. They're going to not pay attention. They're going to get rid of it. It's all about genuine relationships. Now, if you can become, to use a word that was on the article that I was reading for you a little bit earlier, a publisher of information that's actually interesting. Think about a magazine. Think about a magazine that you subscribe to. I, I'm a runner, so I subscribe to Runner's World magazine. And the reason I do it is because they're consistently giving me interesting things to, to read about which is kind of an interesting thing all by itself because think about it, running, how much can you possibly say about running? Well, they've got certain categories of articles that are, that are consistently interesting. They'll put an article in there, usually some kind of big, longer article about something historic uh, that's got some interesting uh, elements to it. And I can count on it almost every month to be pretty interesting. But here's what you've got to understand about that. They've got an entire staff of reporters and freelancers and people that are working to bring this all together because they're selling subscriptions. Meanwhile, you've tasked Dave in the back office to update your Facebook status. And Dave is just some guy named Dave in your back office who's going to be updating stuff, and people are going to see that and hear that, and they're going to say to themselves, what? So it, it's you got to be super careful with this. Older people have a lot less tolerance for fake friends, frivolous posters. I'll give you an example of this. Anthropology on Pinterest. This should be a very scary story for you, okay? Here's the story. My wife is, if they could rank the, the level of how much their customers like them, my wife would be anthropology. This is a, this is a store that caters to women, clothing, frou-frou, fixtures, stuff like that. It, it's like uh, men just are re repulsed and repelled by this store. It's just it's not something that we want to be involved with. Okay, It's like a motorcycle store, but for girls. Okay, My wife loves this store. She'll go over to this store just to smell it because it's got a certain scent to it. We talked about that earlier when we had a different webinar on different senses that can appeal as a part of your marketing. Anyway, she loves to go there. I don't mind it so much because it's actually right next to the Apple store, so I'll just go over and look at Apple stuff for a while. But she goes down there all the time. She loves this store. Her budget with this store is high. She probably spends more money there than on any other thing. It, it's almost ridiculous. So I asked her casually one day. I said, oh, so I'm, I bet you follow anthropology on Pinterest. Because I'm sure Pinterest, big, huge national chain, I'm sure they've got you know, people dedicated to this this social media thing. And Pinterest, if you're not familiar with Pinterest, it's, it's sort of like an online bulletin board that you pin, hence the word Pinterest, pin things that you're interested to on, and then your friends can follow and see what kinds of things you're pinning, and you can put things in different categories. Some of my wife has desserts, and she has clothes, and she has decorations, and she has jewelry, and whatever things that she's interested. I actually don't look at it that much. But you get the idea. So you can have different categories, and your friends can follow you and see it, recipes and all these different kinds of things. So I said, I bet you follow anthropology and look at what they're pinning. And she goes, oh, no, I, I, I don't follow an anthropology on Pinterest. And I about drop, dropped my jaw. I said, what do you mean you don't follow anthropology on Pinterest? She said, well, I used to, but I quit. I dropped them. And I said, why on earth would you drop anthropology? And here's what she told me. This should be very telling to you. She said, because they post or pin in their case, they don't post, they pin. They pin things in huge chunks, and it's annoying. I said, what do you mean huge chunks? She said, well, they'll pin maybe three or four times a week, but they'll pin 30 or 40 things at a time when they pin those three or four times a week. And so it jams up my Pinterest feed, and I've got to sit there and filter through 30 or 40 things at a, at a whack, and I can't see anything else that I'm looking for. She said, so I just dropped it. And I thought, wow, some idiot is in charge of that 
social media strategy at this huge company that would think that dumping 30 or 40 pins at a time is something that people would tolerate. And I'm telling you, if my wife won't tolerate it, nobody's going to tolerate it. And I'm telling you this, if you don't take the time to have interesting, relevant posts, you, you're, you just forget this entire social media thing. Don't even start, okay? Think about the quality, the quantity, and tone of your posts. Quantity, quality, and tone of your posts. We'll talk about specifically what you should do in those, in those regards when we get to our strategy here in just a minute. If you mess this up, nothing else matters. Trust me on this. If you mess this up, quantity, quality, and tone, then nothing else matters. All right? It's like headlines for an advertisement. If you mess up your headline, it doesn't matter how great your text is. Don't do this. Here's some don'ts. Don't spam. Spamming is sending out only self-promotional information. You don't want to do that. It, it looks bad. Some is okay, but don't overdo it. Reposting the same thing over and over again, especially sales information. Think about that running magazine. What if I went and opened it next month and it had the same articles from last month? I'd look at that and I'd say, well, that's kind of weird. But I wouldn't think that much about it. And then the next month it comes out again, and it's got the same articles again. <clears throat> I feel like, what's going on here? How many times of that would you tolerate before you'd quit? How many times would you tolerate seeing the same TV show on over and over again? Reruns are fine, but they usually run <coughs> much later than the original show, and they don't show the same rerun every single week. It just it doesn't make sense. But yet, you'll see companies that post something, and then they post it again, and they post it again. Like, they say, well, I'm running advertisements over and over again. I don't change my advertisement every time I run it. Why can't I just post the same thing over and over again? Because it's not an advertisement, man. That's why. It's a post. Posting too often. We talked about this a minute ago. Nobody wants to hear from you 15 times a day. Seriously, they just don't. All right? How much should they hear from you? We'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, a minute is right now. Two to five times a week is ideal. Now, l let me tell you something about this. There are certain types of companies and entities where social media is really, really important. Let me tell you what they are. Companies that, that their main trade is information. Okay? Companies whose main trade is information, writers, publications, anything that people are used to getting information from is a good bet for social media because ostensibly they can then send out information that people are already looking to that source for and they can get it into people's hands in shorter clips, little sound bites, links to articles, information, information, information. You would think that Monopolize Your Marketplace would be a good company to do a lot of social media because we are an information training type of a company. And it's true. But because we have not allocated the resources to do this, we've opted to just not do it at all. Now, does that mean we're never going to do it? No. It means that right now we've got other things that we're focusing on. Instead of doing it half-baked and doing a crappy job, we're just really not doing it at all. Okay? Two to five times a week. The other kind of company that is good for social media Celebrities. Everybody wants to know what the Kardashians are doing. Everybody wants to know what Kobe Bryant's doing or, you know, whoever. But for a remodeling company, for an electric company, for the local dentist, chiropractor, how many times do you want to hear from your chiropractor? Really? Seriously. Think about it for a minute. How many times do you want to hear from your orthodontist? How many times do you want the lawn company that comes out and sprays bug spray on your lawn? How, how often do you want to hear from them on Facebook? Really? How often do you want to hear from your local grocery store? Well, we've got some offers. We've got some deals. Okay, that's probably a little more relevant to your ongoing life. What about the uh, – I've got a Samsung Series 9 laptop computer. How many times do you think I want to hear from Samsung about computer stuff? Really, not, not none. Zero would be probably about enough. A few would be the maximum. Here's the next one, irrelevant posts. People will unlo unfollow, unlike, or drop from mobile if they're not getting value. Okay, we've talked about that. Posting strategies, make sure, make main points to remember are very, very simple. Here's the main points. Number one, make sure your posts are interesting and relevant. Number two, make sure you post interesting, relevant content. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. That's the, that, that is it. If you missed this, you missed. Okay? So let's talk about nine steps to creating a strategy. This will go pretty fast. Step one, choose your platforms. Here's where I recommend you start, Facebook. Facebook. That's it. You say, well, no, I'm going to go on Twitter. Well, you, let, let me tell you about Twitter. Your target market really isn't on Twitter. 
You say, no, no, I know people on Twitter. I know you know people on Twitter. I'm not saying that there's not a 70-year-old guy on Twitter. There probably is. I'm saying that the majority of your target market is not on Twitter. They're just not. Don't take the sum R for the it's worth doing. Now, if you look at Facebook, what percentage of your target market is on Facebook? And the answer is significantly more. Then you've got something like Pinterest. I think Pinterest can be an interesting uh, social media platform, particularly for some of you out there that maybe have design build companies because it's a good forum for you to visually take things that are interesting looking in terms of design, houses that have been done, you know, whatever things that you can find on Pinterest and you can become a, uh, an aggregator of interesting ideas and you can put them on there for people to follow. So I think there's validity to that. Uh, if you're a roofing company, eh, not, not really so much, not really so much. So just think about that. House is another one that's dedicated more to the home, the remodeling, home improvement, home type things called house. Uh, the reality is the followership of that is so low that uh, I don't want to talk about it. All right. Twitter, not important. We talked about that. YouTube, if you can manage it. YouTube is good. The, the thing that's great about YouTube is it, it's really good for your SEO rankings. And the reason is because Google owns YouTube. Anytime Google owns something, that means it's probably going to be good for social, for SEO rankings. The problem is now you've got to make videos, you've got to post videos, you've got to be involved in that process, and that may be more time and effort than you want to spend. So if you can manage it, great. If not, don't worry about it that much. Okay. Step two, create the account. Like I said, Facebook is your starting point. Oh, we already talked about that. Let's show how to do this. If you don't know how to do this, if you're working with uh, MYM on your SEO, we can do this for you. But just a very, very brief overview of this. This is not meant to be comprehensive instruction, but just to give you an idea, go to uh, facebook.com slash pages slash create, and you'll see something like this. It says create a page, and then you've got some choices. Are you a local business or a place? Are you a company? Are you a brand? Are you a cause? Are you entertainment? Are you an artist or a public figure? And uh, choose local business or place. Upload your photo. The about section, you can put two or three sentences in there. Explore the admin panel. It'll it'll give you, it'll prompt you to fill out certain things. <clears throat> and then uh, you know what? I really don't want to go into this because you, you'll need to just figure this out. This webinar is not intended to be a how-to step-by-step, but just to point you in the right direction. Okay? Way to build an audience, start to have content. The next step is beginning content. Right? One of the things it asks for is cover photo and tabs. This is uh, what it gives you an 851 by 315 area for a picture. So if you've got some, let's say that you've done a dramatic kitchen that you've remodeled, you might want to upload that picture in that dimension so it looks really cool. Uh, you can also put a profile picture that's 180 by 180 pixels. Uh, so maybe your logo, maybe a picture of you, just depends on what you want to do. And then down here, there's custom tabs. And these are things that you can define within that admin panel. You can upload pictures that will visually show people what's on that tab. So just understand this is kind of how this thing works, okay? Here's an example of what it looks like in real life. So this is statewide remodeling. You see that they've got uh, this sort of multi-picture thing here. We've got the kitchen on the left, the living room, and it shows that they do sunrooms, windows, remodeling of kitchen. It's a, it's a large picture. Over here, statewide remodeling and their logo. That could doesn't have to be your logo, but it, 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 that's what they chose to do, and a lot of companies cho choose to do. And then statewide remodeling down here, you see that they've customized these to have photos, likes, videos, and events. And those are, like I said, customizable, <laughs> and you can walk through that on the show, on the, uh, on the site, okay? Uh, right here on the left, you'll see here uh, home, window service, kitchen construction. This is just a very brief overview of what they are. So you can see that they've got 165 people that like them. Now, this, this, here's an interesting thing about this. This is Facebook. It's a big deal. This is statewide remodeling. They're a big deal here in Dallas. They've only got 165 likes. It's just not that many. It's just not a part of their um, strategy right now. Here's another one that's got a little bit more action, Jackson Design and Remodeling. You can see that they've got 2,276 likes. And you can see that they've put this beautiful kitchen photo as their cover photo, and then instead of having a logo, they've shown a different view of a remodel, 
They've uh, customized theirs to be photos, reviews. They're guild quality members, so they've chosen that. They've also got a link to their Pinterest, uh, probably ostensibly because their Pinterest account, because they're a remodeling company, perhaps to design and build, is going to have some of those interesting kinds of things that I talked about earlier. You can see down here they've chosen to put uh, their contact information and so forth. Okay. Step three of nine for your strategy: put social media icons on your website, marketing, advertising, so people know to look for you. So here's an example of just a random website, and here's where the social media icons are. Uh, again, really, do you need 17 social icons? Here's what I find frequently. It's kind of funny. I'll see a company like this, and I'll click on these social icons, and you click on Facebook, and they've got 49 likes, and you click on YouTube, and they've got 11 subscribers, and you click on, click on Twitter, and they've got 17 followers. And, and you kind of look at it and say, okay, obviously this isn't, getting much traction. I would focus on getting more traction on one thing instead of a little traction on a lot of things. Okay, So just think through that. That's up to you, obviously. Step four, creating a strategy. Designate a person to be in charge of posting. This is mission critical. They're more likely to actually get it done when somebody knows that they're going to be accountable. This person can find time to research, write, and post things. Somebody needs to be in charge. Here's the worst case scenario. We've got a Facebook page. Okay, who's going to post stuff? Hey, Jenny, can you post something today? We need to post something. I don't know. Dave, you post it. Not good. Single source person, all right? By the way, don't go hire this person. Just have somebody do it. It should take them about an hour a week if they want to spend a decent amount of time, maybe two hours a week if they want to get a little bit more involved. Step five, determine how often you're going to post. Again, consider your target market. Consider what kinds of things you want to post about. Consider how much time you have to dedicate to the project. I'm going to recommend a couple of hours a week for somebody that works for you to research and be able to post things that are actually really worthwhile. Two to five posts a week is ideal. You say, wow, if I do, say, four posts a week, somebody's spending four hours on, uh, two hours on that, that's 30 minutes per post. Well, it only takes a couple of minutes to actually post them. The other time is spent researching things and writing things that are actually worth posting. Okay? Don't try for more unless you have a ton of great content. If you've got a lot of things to post, well, then you could probably do six or eight or ten because people will like what you're posting if it's great content. Number six, research and write the content. Right? People want to see what's available. They want to see what you can do. Invest in taking photos of jobs. That's a good thing to post. Research remodeling websites for content you can link to. Write articles and blogs about relevant topics. These are all going to be things that are going to be SEO rich. Look what other remodelers are posting. Vendor partner content. Maybe some of the vendors that you represent have content. Let me give you an example. Um, this is a company called Moen. This is their... Uh, website. And they've got a shower planner, faucet selector, shower planner, and so forth. But here's what's interesting. If you go to their website, let's say that you rep Moen. I don't know if you do or not, but if you did, you could come on here and click on uh, some of their ideas. I'm not sure where this page came from, but it was easy to find. Kitchen and planning ideas. Don't let sink shopping be a draining experience. How to choose the right faucet without getting all wet. How Save here save here, spend there for a kitchen that sizzles. Help for the remodeling challenge. These are all topics and articles that have been written by Moen. So if you're a Moen dealer, here's a wealth of information that you can link to that you don't have to go you know, search the internet for. It's just available. You can put links in your post to the Moen uh, website. Now Moen likes that because they get traffic to their website. It also though shows that there's links um, to your website. So this is good. Step seven, write the actual post. Keep them short and to the point. Make sure the links are present and easy to see. Link things back to your own website whenever possible. If you're linking to a third-party source, that's harder. Back to your own website when possible because that's going to be better for your SEO rankings. Think of your posts like headlines. They must engage people, make them want to continue reading. Boring is the killer for social media. So. Let's look at a couple of just sample posts. These could be tweets. These could be Facebook posts. Let's talk Facebook because that's what we've been talking about today. New stats 
out that show increase in home value for various remodeling projects. For the fifth year in a row, a new kitchen tops the list with a 94.3 immediate return on investment. Bathrooms are second at 82.4. Just completed Johnson Kitchen remodel in Southlake. Check out before and after photos. Link, boom, website, social proof, this is a good thing. Oops, another remodeling company bites the dust in the recession. Be careful. And then maybe a link to an article in the local paper about a company that left the, com left the customer holding the bag when they went out of business. Check out Beyonce's newly remodeled home. We can all dream, right? Boom, link to whatever, Entertainment Weekly website where it shows her beautiful new remodeled house. Wondering what the most energy efficient appliances are? You might be surprised which brand is tops. These are all examples of things that people are going to look at. And even if they're not interested in Beyonce's home, even if they don't click through to the remodeling company bites the dust, regardless of whether they actually link, these are things that are very likely not going to register as irrelevant, stupid, uninteresting posts to your readers. Okay? They're not self-promoting. You say, well, well, one says kitchen remodel in Southlake. Well, if you post links to before and after photos every three hours, people are going to get sick of that. But if you mix it in, see, then that's going to be a good post. Next, how to choose the right faucet without getting all wet. Where did that come from? Moen. Save here, spend there, create a kitchen that sizzles. That's the Moen article. Mixed up by modern, confused by what's considered contemporary, with more emphasis on home design today, it can be difficult for homeowners to distinguish between array of styles and designs. I took that straight from the Moen website. Fantasy Island. Take a look at how to turn a simple kitchen island into a showpiece for your entire home. Okay, interesting. Great remodeling ideas for those on a tighter budget, including six quick ideas to update your kitchen. Okay, you following me? Those just came straight from Moen. Step eight. We've got two steps to go, and then we'll be done. Schedule posts one to two weeks in advance so you're not always scrambling. Okay, that's just self evident. There's no other there's no other clarifying information on that other than just you don't want to be scrambling. That's the killer. It's the kiss of death for uh, Facebook, social media. Step nine, analyze results. For Facebook, use Facebook Page Insights. This is a tool that's available in websites. It gives you details beyond the scope of this introductory webinar. However, let's take a look. It helps you understand how effective and engaging your posts are. helps you understand who your audience is, where your audience is, and, and much, much more. Google. Just do a Google search for Facebook Page Insights PDF, and you'll be able to pull up a PDF that will explain this to you. Just show you a couple of things on here. <clears throat> this is one of the uh, analytics that you can see on the, uh, on the uh, Facebook Insights. shows you the date that you posted something. shows you what the post was. You can click on it to see the full thing. It shows you how many people it reached, how many engaged users, how many people were talking about this and what the virality is. Now let's define those things for you. Reach, the number of people who have seen your post. Engage users, the number of people who have clicked anywhere on your post. So you see there that we've got 1,075 out of 71,000 that engaged. Talking about this, the number of unique people who have created a story from your post. Stories include liking, commenting on sharing your post, answering a question, responding to an event, and then virality, the number of pe unique people who have created a story from your post page is a percentage of the number of unique people who've seen it. So that's 0.37%, a little bit less than a half a percent. So let's take a look at these articles that are on here. We've got three different things that were posted. We've got varying levels of people that they reached. And you can see there that the second post, 92011, why we try to give you lots of tips, had a lower reach, but it had a much higher uh, number of engaged users. But the percentage of, of uh, talking about this was not uh, really as good. So it just helps you analyze this stuff. Also, fans tab. The fans tab helps you understand who your fans are, how you acquired them, where are they located, United States, Japan, Bogota, whatever. What languages do they speak? It tells you their gender and their age. This particular one shows 39% female, 57% male and then the age ranges and the different cities and so forth. So this is a just interesting information, but if you don't ever log in to check this stuff, you'll never see this stuff, okay? All right, that's where we're going to end up right now. I will take any Q&A that you have. If you want to type it into the console or if you want to raise your hand, I will unmute you if you're dialed in on a phone. Uh, let's take any um, social media questions that you may have. 
cue the Jeopardy music. Let me see if we got any questions on the typed in thing. No, no. We got a really good audience today on this webinar, so hopefully some of you have some questions, comments, things that have worked for you, something that didn't work for you, something you regretted later, anything? Give you five seconds to enter a question or to raise your hand. No? No? Okay. All right, then we will end up there. Thanks for attending today. We've got uh, more webinars coming up. Uh, I'm sure next week, I don't have the schedule in front of me. Yes, I do. Here it is. Let's see. Next week, we've got, uh, man, we were already in February. We've got a Tuesday morning ad clinic on Tuesday. we got a strategic marketing webinar on Thursday. And in the middle of those two, I will be in San Antonio doing a seminar. So we will uh, talk to you next Tuesday. Thanks so much for participating. We'll talk to you later. Bye now.